Hello. Happy Wonderland Wednesday. This is Allison's Wonderland, the show that takes you through the looking glass and down the rabbit hole into the wild and wonderful world of animation and video games. Thank you so much to everyone that's joining in live. Peyton, it's good to see you. Skaya, you're back. Hawk, Kate, good to see your face. Steve Scally. Hey, Kick Snare Hat. Welcome to the stream. Jonathan, such a pleasure. Barry, Chris Brown, always glad to see you here. Hunter, you made it to the party. Welcome, welcome. Angus McLeod, what a fantastic name. Thank you for joining us live, guys. I'm very excited for tonight's show. We are going to be hosting the special guest, Sean Ryan Peterson, voice actor and um, on camera actor as well. Very talented voice actor. Um, you best known for his role as Valentino on the Cartoon Network show Victor and Valentino. He's also in Final Fantasy VII Remake as well as a bunch of other projects. So we're going to jump right in and get to know him. You have some good news. That's fantastic. Guys, thank you so much to everyone that's tuning in live. It's always so much fun when we can have you guys on live. Candair, hey, good to see you. And everybody, welcome Sean Ryan Peterson. We are happy to have him to the stream. So I'm going to go ahead, send him a recording. And I've already got the fan questions that were entered in before. We'll save a few minutes at the end. So welcome, Sean. Hi. Hey. Happy Wednesday. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. Whoa, I've got to see your hair. Let me see. Oh, yes. Do you like it? I love it. It's fabulous. When did you, uh, when did you change it up? I hadn't noticed. Oh, uh, after I built my uh, home studio, I was like, you know what, actually, I think I'm also going to do a little self-improvement. <laughs> and I went in, I got my hair dyed red. It's one of my favorite colors, that and green. But I think red looks better on me, you know? It looks fantastic on you. It's so funny because I went pink a little bit of blushy pink this week. So I think you and I are just really on the good. same wavelength. It's fantastic. Absolutely. Dyed hair is the best. <laughs> I am so glad to have you on the show and so nice to actually meet you. We've never met in person, but I'm familiar with your work. And um, it's so great to finally meet you in person. Yes, I agree. It's so lovely to meet you. Uh, thank you for having me on. You're so welcome. So let's just jump right in. I know that your first job was actually acting in a TV promo. And I was kind of just curious, how did that first opportunity come about? Um, it was when I first started doing some voiceover. I had gone over, you know, I wasn't super familiar, but I always wanted to be a voice on cartoon. So when I got a promo, I'm like, oh, a chance to be like in one of those commercials that run a lot. I was like, oh, I really want to be a part of this. That was a lot of fun. It was an interesting process. I don't remember it super well because I was very young and I was first starting out, but it was you interesting six, hearing myself right? for the first time. Were you six years old? Is that I, was, I was eight. Eight. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Eight. <laughs> much more mature. Oh, up. yes. So much more mature. <laughs> and so sorry to interrupt. You were saying? Um, it was just interesting hearing my voice. I was like, wow. I never heard it before through a microphone. I was like... I'm not talking, but I'm hearing myself. Isn't that crazy? It was just, it, it blew my, my, my very mature eight-year-old mind. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, was that just something you, you auditioned for? Or was that um, someone knew that you wanted to bring you to that and you had to give you the opportunity? Um, it was something I did audition for. Uh, when I first met my uh, my voiceover agent, uh, because that actually voiceover is how I initially wanted to get into the industry, uh, you know, I just got sent out for a bunch of stuff. You know, I was a young kid, young voice. You know, um, she's like, here's a ton of projects, just audition. And I got that promo. That's so amazing. So were you surprised or were you were you thinking, hey, this could be my future? I had always wanted it to be my future when I got into it. I'm like, I want to do what some of these people have done for me. People like Tom Kenny and Dee Bradley Baker. They voiced my entire childhood, and they brought me so much joy with the cartoons I watched growing up. So I'm like, I want to do that for other people. And if I do it while I'm young, although this was more of an afterthought when I <laughs> much later in life, I'm like, if I do it while I'm young, then maybe I can also inspire people to be like, you know, it, your age doesn't stop you from pursuing your dreams. Yes. Yes, on both ends of the spectrum, right? You're never too young and you're never too old. Never too old. Words of wisdom. Um, 
So at, at, you started as acting pretty and doing voiceover pretty young. Did any of the cartoons, uh, what were some of your favorite cartoons growing up? You mentioned Tom Kenny and Dee Bradley Baker. Were you yeah. Spongebob? Oh, yes. When you, when, when you say Tom Kenny, the first thought really that comes to mind is Spongebob. Uh, Dee Bradley Baker did monsters for all of my favorite shows. Yeah. I especially liked Codename Kids Next Door. I liked Ben 10. I, uh, Chowder was one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Ugh. I had a lot of shows I loved growing up, and I just, I, I really only watched cartoons. Yeah, I was the same. I, you know, I would pretend that I was only allowed to watch cartoons because that's all I wanted to watch. <laughs> we're like kids, we're like kids that never, that will never grow up. And um, did you play video games as well as a kid? Oh, yes. I mean, I waited a little bit later, but my mom and dad, they were huge gamers growing up. They both had like Nintendos, N64s. My mom loves Mario. My dad played at arcades whenever he could. And when home consoles, he's like, oh, yeah. And he bought all kinds. It was just they wanted me to also experience that because games brought them so much joy. So, you know, we we've all I've grown up playing video games and watching cartoons. That was my entire childhood. What were some of the games you loved? Most of the games I can really remember fondly are from the first Xbox, not the 360, but the first first Xbox. Uh -huh. There was yeah. a, a Star Wars Obi-Wan game. There was also like Pac-Man World 2. It was like one of a couple 3D Pac-Man games that was yeah. more like a platformer and less like the 2D maze type. That one was a lot of fun. Um... But yeah, those are those are two of my favorite games. I actually have a lot yeah. of fond memories with. One of my first co-op games, though, was a uh, Halo Three. Much later on, I played that with my dad and my brother. That one was also a lot of fun. Ah, that's amazing. And you grew up right here in Los Angeles, or nearby? Yep, born and raised Cali boy, Los Angeles, yes, California, baby. forever. L.A. L.A. Um. So, you know, obviously you were drawn towards media and TV and video games. Did you have other creative outlets at school? Did you play any sports or um, enjoy doing any other forms of art? I played a lot of sports growing up, but at the end of the day, I did find myself very enthralled by music. I love oh, listening to music. It calms me down or it hypes me up. I, I have playlists for all kinds of moods and ways of getting into those moods. So I picked up the drums. It turned out something I especially loved about music was like the rhythm and the beats, the drums behind it. I felt like a, an epic drum line could inspire me for battle in a D and D session. After I, <laughs> you know, I did. I love D and D too. That's another thing that I. Do you play? I started that later though in college. But yeah, music. Okay. Music was my other outlet. I like to play the drums. Love Amazing. to play the drums. Amazing. Have you ever played in a band or uh, performed live in any kind of form? Yeah, um, when I was learning how to play the drums, I actually went through the School of Rock program. I highly recommend it for anyone looking to like get into music. That's fun. <laughs> they help you get on stage. They teach you how to play an instrument, and you learn uh, band dynamics. It's a, it's it's an amazing experience. I cannot recommend it enough. That's how I learned how to play the drums, and it's also how I got on stage a couple of times. And the. Uh, it is such a different experience from like voiceover, but yeah. I still loved it. You know what's so funny, Sean Ryan, is my son uh, loves the drums as well. And we got him a drum set when he was like three. <laughs> which my husband was like, we're going to get him a drum set. And I was like, really though? Are we, are we really? Okay. Um, to which we have taken it out and put it, put it back in. But he was taking at School of Rock uh, prior to the pandemic and so we hope to go back this year so i think you're you'd probably be a huge inspiration for him he's a, a big fan of cartoons so he's only um five and a half but uh how old were you when you started drumming away i was 12 yeah i was 12 yeah. i've been wow i've been playing the drums for more than six years <laughs> the whole concept of time especially when quarantine hit it just out the window but uh, yeah I and were you in school when the quarantine hit or? Yes, I was. It was my sophomore year of college when quarantine hit. Uh, it was sad to go in, but, you know, I also got a chance to finally build my home studio, which I'm in right now doing this interview. Mm -hmm. But I was really happy to finally put all this together. You're welcome to show us around. But if it's if it's uncomfortable or difficult to move your camera, that's fine, too. 
Um, it's a little difficult, but I'll try and at least like give a little like side view by moving the arm here. Uh, here's the microphone nice. and, the, and the walls. I did a little like black and white square tile pattern. That's what uh, <laughs> that's those are some also I know it's like they're not necessarily colors, but I do like black and white as well. Yeah, it's like very punk rock. So I'm yeah, that's the right. Hair and the black and white tiles and the drums, man. I'm like, hey, sign me up. This sounds amazing. <laughs> Um, so, you know, obviously you're definitely an artist through and through and, um, your first major role was Ollie on Dive, Ollie Dive. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember I was in like an after school math program. I was uh -huh. sort of just chilling out, doing my thing. I was in like third or fourth grade and like my mom comes in all like, <laughs> like I'm like, and pulls me out of class and she's like, Sean, I got to tell you something. You booked your first series. I'm like, oh my gosh, really? And she's like, yeah, you're on PBS. You're doing this dive only dive show. I'm like, wow. I'm like, I did not expect to like. You know, everyone goes into the industry and they want to book a job. They want to work. But yeah. when you get that first major role, it's yeah. all like, kind of like knocks the wind out of you. Like, yes, I, I did it. I actually did it. Yeah. And, and I mean, did you feel that the other kids in your school could relate? Um, I know LA actually does have a fair amount of uh, <laughs> kids that are working on their acting and voice acting, but um, not always at every school. So I was wondering, you know, did it feel weird? I wouldn't say it was weird because at least when I started, you know, we were all still at that age where, you know, imagination, we were all playing pretend, yeah. um, imagining our favorite worlds in real life and whatnot. But I will say that I was a little different. You know, obviously there's the more theatrical side of me being extra energetic and acting in <laughs> all of the imaginary worlds we were in. But, you know, I was also the only kid that was sort of, pursuing a career in an adult industry so you know children in this industry do have to grow up just a little bit faster i always uh <laughs> fashion i was always complimented for being a mature kid mm -hmm. uh so yeah i was a little mature for my age and sometimes that was weird for the other kids around me when i was like oh yeah i mean we could do that or we could do this and they were like okay that's a little adult thing that you're asking us to do <laughs> You like but yeah, for the most part, <laughs> for the most part, I it was it was a lot of fun. A lot of people liked me because I was so out there and energetic and uh, telling funny jokes, doing funny voices. Uh huh. So I, I'm also ex I'm very extroverted. <laughs> oh, I always wanted to do the lemonade stand, but you know, just I never got around to it. People usually uh, just kind of go on my street. They don't really stop to look at lemonade stands. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, so that must have been... And, and how many seasons of Dive, Volley, Dive did you guys do? I don't think I ever really took count of seasons, but I, I will never forget the episode number. I don't know why, but I, I, I always remember it was like 67 or 57. It was one of those two. Wow. 57 or 67 total episodes. And um, did your voice happen to change during that time, or was that not in the middle of that hole. I know sometimes that can be challenging. It wasn't in the middle of it. I think I was like 11 when we finished Dive, Ollie, Dive. I did it for like three or four years. Yeah. Um, but to be perfectly honest, because of Dive, Ollie, Dive and all the voices I was doing, my voice never really dropped per se. <laughs> I've always sort of been higher pitched in general. And I can really do, th I do think that for my voice, voice acting career, because I, I've always practicing in a higher pitch, talking to higher pitch, high energy. So my voice never like really entered some sort of deep zone. <laughs> You've got vocal <laughs> versatility because obviously you could go, go down there if you need to. Yeah. If you need to, if you, if you gotta be like a 30 year old, you gotta just go Whoa. a little lower. But for the most part, I'm, I'm in this higher, this higher register. Oh, that's so great, though. I love that. I, <laughs> um, that's so amazing. Um, well, congratulations on the season pre season three premiere of Victor and Valentino. Um, and I was curious, um, can you tell us about how you first became involved in that show for Cartoon Network? And it's Car that's... Cartoon Network's first bilingual show, right? 
Yes, that's one of my favorite stories to tell um, because it was it was a very short and quick audition process, something that generally for uh, lead roles is not the case. But um, I had initially uh, auditioned for Victor and then came back for Valentino. And that was, it was such an amazing experience because I got to meet Diego and he was super cool. I could see the passion for the show he had. And I met my awesome booth mom i like uh colette sunderman she does tons of shows for cartoon network but she was so nice so welcoming she's like oh yes thank you you came in so prepared and she's giving me thumbs up and like giving me awesome notes her energy i fed off her energy she's just lovely i i love colette she's great um and in like three weeks i got the call i was at dinner with my family and she's like you you booked Victor and Valentino. My mom got a call from my agent and she was like, she was ecstatic. She's hyperventilating. I'm kind of like sitting there shell shock. Like what? I'm working for Cartoon Network. Cause a lot of my favorite shows growing up were from Cartoon Network. It was, a, it was the cartoon channel that I'd always wanted to work for. And I was like, I'm a lead character on a Cartoon Network show. That was one of the best nights of my life. I can confidently say that. Yeah. Wow. And then how's it been working on the show? What's your favorite thing about the show? Oh, well, before quarantine hit, it was definitely the atmosphere of like an ensemble cast record. We're all in the room together, looking at each other, doing motions because, you know, physicality, even though we're not on a camera, physicality is still incredibly important for voiceover, as I'm sure you know. You know, motioning what you're doing. If you're running, even if you're just running in place, moving your arms back and forth, screaming, you know, moving your hands, it kind of helps you get into the, the, the feel, the read. But that's that's definitely one of my favorite parts. All the wonderful people I met, Christina V, Christina Maliza, Yuri Lowenthal, Max Middleman, the big boss man himself, Diego Milano. It was just so cool working in the room with them because they were also the voices of my childhood and the games I've played. So it was just like, I'm meeting these people. Yeah. Uh, without giving away any spoilers, what's your favorite part of season three? Well, that is very difficult because my favorite part of season three is the end. And this is what happens, everyone. I'm kidding. I'm not going to tell you. You guys are going to have to stick around for that ride because it is a ride. Oh, my gosh. So much is going to happen in the season finale, and I can't wait for you guys to see it. There's a, there's a lot of spice. A lot of spice. That's amazing. Yeah, T Tamir is just uh, saying Christina V was on a couple weeks ago. We had the good fortune of interviewing Christina B. And, and one of our um, guests had, had asked what it's like working with Christina Malizia and Diego Milano um, when you guys are all working together. What's that experience like? Melissa's just such a positive person. Uh, she plays Charlene and uh, she also plays... She also plays Isabella. And, okay, also, Isabella is going to play a huge role uh, in this upcoming season, some of the storylines. So also, also keep an eye out for that. Um, but yes, uh, it's, she's so nice. She laughs at my jokes and my funny moments, especially my falsetto screams. I don't know if it'll blow out the microphone on the phone. So I, I won't do it. Maybe like a little bit like, ah! I can scream really high pitch. I'm sure some of you guys who've watched Victor and Valentino have definitely heard some of those a lot. Val does them all the time, but she's just so lovely to work with. And Diego, he puts his all into his performances for Victor. Um, I don't know if he's ever done any voice work before Victor and Valentino, but like he's, he's a natural. He's so good at it. Um, he because he also writes the show, so he knows exactly what he wants it to sound like. So it's so easy to, you know, like give these awesome reads, make these awesome episodes and bring them to life because he's right there next to me. And he's like, yeah, let's do this. Let's try this. It's like, okay, now throw in a falsetto scream. He's like, or gag. <laughs> Valentino, Valentino has a, I think he's a bit of a weak stomach. So he's a lot of, <laughs> he's a little, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, those, those two are amazing. I love working with them. And um, so did you guys have to pivot to recording remotely when the pandemic hit? Yes, we did. Uh, there was still a good chunk of episodes to record by the time the pandemic hit, which was a little sad that we had to stop doing our ensemble cast, but we were still all together in the Zoom. So we still had each other. We were like supporting each other. It was something I looked forward to every week, like seeing them all be like, hey, and then hey, it was just, I miss them. I, I'm really looking forward to hopefully working with them again soon. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you got your home home booth all set up, so. Yes, yes. An absolute <laughs> necessity at this point. And so um, are you pretty much working from home most of the time and auditioning from home most of the time? Or do you have any shows? Yes. I mean, after I invested in, like, all the studio, like, great equipment to record the show, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just record from home all my auditions and any other projects, unless, of course, I'm requested to come into the studio, and I just, I love the atmosphere of going into the studio, so I'll always be like, of course, you want me to come in? Sure. <laughs> but, yeah, for the most part, I'm recording remotely or auditioning remotely. Okay, cool. And so when you when you have, get an audition that comes through the pipeline, how do you prepare for, um, for a role? Um, usually they give a pretty extensive breakdown of the character traits or the, sh or the vibe of the show, at least. Mm -hmm. So in, if it exists, I always recommend watching it first, you know, cause what better, what better to gauge the vibe of a show that's already out than just watching some of it. Yeah. But, um, I like to, I like to look at character images or try and at least imagine what they might look like if one's not provided, come up a voice with it that way or read the lines and get the tone. Mm -hmm. I do some pretty extensive breakdown and marking up of my script it's like it's just it's funny what they look like afterwards because it's like oh so many pencil marks eraser marks a lot of back and forth changes multiple takes um sometimes i uh get some help from my good friend tony uh guru of voice acting he's great tony gonzalez yes tony gonzalez i haven't seen him in a few years he's just such a lovely person he is yeah, tell him I can that. I can thank him thank him for a lot of my success. He That's helped great. me quite a bit. Was he your first vocal coach? He was um, my favorite vocal coach. So, for those that don't know, can you tell um, tell us about Tony Gonzalez and um, his coaching business that he has? Yes, uh, Tony Gonzalez. He is a wonderful man, guru of voice acting. So many techniques, a wonderful formula. Very uh, easy to practice, easy to learn. Uh, but you know, the application is where it gets a little difficult. It's, it takes a lot of uh, focus in your own self to like put yourself into it with the tools he gives you. Um, but like, he's an amazing vocal coach. I think he's personally one of the best out there. So if you're, if you're getting into the business and you can somehow find a way into his incredibly busy schedule, do it. Make that effort. He is worth it. That's amazing. Well, yeah, happy. I'm happy to share um, Tony's info on here to my stories. If, if you guys want, I'll see if I can track it down. Um, I was wondering, uh, Sean Ryan, would you be opening do to do something new that I was thinking could be really fun, which is uh, a one minute round of questions, lightning questions. So just super simple, easy uh, questions. Would you want to try it? Of course. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to set my timer for one minute and I am just going to start firing away. Are you ready? I am ready. Here we go. Lightning round begins. Okay, what's your favorite color? Uh, red. Where did you grow up? Los Angeles, California. If you had to choose pizza or pasta? Pizza, easily. If, if you had to choose pizza or ice cream? Ice cream, uh, mint chip. What's your favorite TV show? Victor and Valentino. <laughs> Duh. What uh, video game have you played the most in your life? Uh, Halo 3. What video game have you played the most this year? Uh, Civilization 6. What's your favorite beverage? A vanilla ice latte from Starbucks. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Easy. <laughs> what is your zodiac sign? I am a Leo. Leo! Happy birthday. Um, related. Uh, do you play any sports right now? None. Do you have siblings? Uh, younger brother, two years. What was the last movie you watched? Uh, 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 Shang-Chi in the Seven Rings. Super good. What's your favorite line is Valentino? Uh, anytime he does a false side of scream. Ah! And that was a, minute, a little over. Oh, yay. Thank you for taking part in my experimental lightning round uh, energy. Um, 
I wanted to just let everybody know if you're if you are not familiar with the show, it's called Allison's Wonderland. We're here on IGTV every Wednesday, usually 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're here with Sean Ryan Peterson. Uh, we're going to talk about Final Fantasy next. He's best known as uh, Valentino and Victor and Valentino. And um, just to let you guys know, if you want to tune in next week, we have voice actress Jennifer Hale, prolific game and animation voice actor and founder of SkillsHub.life. So we're going to talk to Jennifer Hale all about her career and all about skillshub.life. And um, after that, we are going to be hosting Ezra Weiss, who is uh, a voice actor as well as animation director, best known for Miraculous Ladybug, Cable Girls, and Megalobox. Megalobox. Ooh, I've <laughs> so, seen that. Ah, okay, back to the interview. Um, so, Sean Ryan, let's talk about Chad in the Final Fantasy VII remake. Yes, Chadley. That was one of my most exciting roles because I had always, as well as doing work for Cartoon Network, had always wanted to be a part of a video game. That was another thing because video games and cartoons were such a big part of my life. I'm like, okay, I want to work and do cartoons and video games. And that was my first video game role. And oh, that was such good news to hear that because Final Fantasy VII, I never got to play the original, but it is one of the most historical Japanese role-playing games in existence. So to hear that I was going to be able to play a major quest giver in the remake, I was like, yes! Yes! <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And, and so how long did you work on the game for? I, uh, over a course of three sessions, completed all of my lines for Chadley. Nice. And, and who was the director on that project? Actually, Colette was the booth director. Uh, so I got to work with my wonderful work mom again. She was the booth director for uh, all of my Chapley lines. Aw, wow. And so that was, that Victor and Valentino was first and then Final Fantasy, is that correct? Yes, it was first Victor and Valentino and then Final Fantasy VII. I worked with a couple other, it was like several booth directors on the project, but my first two sessions were with Colette. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, and you also have a Twitch. Yes, Sean's Game Theater. Uh, I am a little busy settling back into college after we're back on campus, but I'm going to start streaming on there, hopefully every Monday and Wednesday sometime between 12 and 4. Wow, that's amazing. How long have you been doing Twitch for? Not very long. It's another thing I also started once we entered quarantine. I built the booth, and then I'm like, hey, I've always wanted to play video. I love playing video games all the time, so why not stream it? And I then made, uh, like, I, I built a crazy computer and then set up a little nice corner, got a table, some lights. And I'm like, I'll stream. Let's stream. Yeah, that's so cool. I want to come play video games with you. That sounds so fun. <laughs> that's amazing. What games do you play? Um, well, I was there for like the big Among Us when that was like a huge trend. I played quite a bit of that, uh -huh. but, um, I'm going to just stream like games. I like roguelites, uh, enter the gungeon. That one's pretty fun. Uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of a, a, like an edgier game, but like, I like darkest dungeon. That one's pretty fun. It's like one of those spooky, like scary games where it's all luck based and RNG and you can either do amazing or fail horribly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, li I like games that are like based on like chance and like, oh, you build a team and you can either have an amazing run or a horrible run. I don't know if any of you guys out there play roguelites, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. That's amazing. And so do you have a, like a particular streaming style or are you just talking and joking along with everybody as you... As you play? Pretty much talking and joking along with everyone. I might take a more narrative stance. I might start uh, streaming walkthroughs of games I enjoy that have a narrative to them and are not like just like, oh, go in, play the game, and then, oh, you die, okay, start over. But like games, I, I might do a Final Fantasy VII remake uh, playthrough, and that one would be a little more narrative. I might even do a couple of things where I like pretend to be Chadley narrating from like a third person view, like, oh, I don't remember this event, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it would also be interesting to hear like some behind the scenes stories while you're uh, playing the game. Oh, well, I remember we recorded this. And... <laughs> yeah, is, if anyone asks me questions in chat, I mean, I, I would definitely answer them right then and there. Maybe even one day just do a like a Q&A stream and be like chill sitting in a chair with a cup of coffee like, so let us begin the inquiry. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so what are you studying at college? 
I am an English major. I also enjoy writing. That was more of a recent love I came to found. I have a, I, I like to write down my dreams and stuff. And I'm like, oh, maybe imagining storylines. I'm like, wait a minute. Why don't I just put these ideas to paper? So, you know, I'm studying English with a uh, focus in fiction. I might start writing my own books. Um, maybe one day I'll even write a script and make my own show. There's um, a practice called lucid dreaming. Have you ever heard of it? I've heard of it. I've never really delved into it. Uh, <laughs> one time my friend's like, oh, man, I was doing this lucid dream thing. And I, I didn't even know if I, when I woke up, I'm like, OK, man, t take it easy. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. You can actually train yourself how to have them. I kind of stumbled upon it when I was in college and had one by mistake. And then I was like, what? That was like the most amazing experience of my life. Um, how do I do this? There's an author named Stephen LaBerge, if, if you're interested. Um, he has books that can train you different techniques for how to wake up in your dreams. It's pretty, hmm. pretty rad. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I love journaling my dreams as well. I always find so much meaning and get new insights into my life on them. So it's a sign of creativity. Um, and so English is your major and, and you are bilingual. Is that? Oh, no, I, I only speak English. You only speak English. Got it. Got yes. it. And so hence uh, majoring in English, your first love. <laughs> and and, um, and so you grew up in um, Los Angeles. And when you were attending school, did you did you go to just a, a a regular kind of school and and just pull pull out or were you homeschooled oh uh no i went i actually did all uh all years uh elementary middle and high uh, my elementary school only went up to fifth grade though so i did switch to a private school saint monica's for most of my all my middle school and most of my high school year but uh when my schedule was changing and i got very busy i ended up spending my senior year at a specialty school called fusion academy which is like very very college like it's one student to one teacher that of course that's not college like but like you get to build your own schedule and they are willing to work around your schedule they do take on a lot of industry kids or yeah. like models <laughs> or influencers people with like fluctuating schedules who wanted to complete school who needed the flexibility on the school's behalf so that's where i went and that's also where i uh started working on victor and valentino so i was very grateful for that flexibility it sounds like an amazing experience it was it was a very nice school the people there were very understanding and that mm -hmm. i was always grateful for that i was like oh boy if i was in a normal school and i had to miss class every wednesday that would be like whoa yeah um, so who are some of the actors or voice actors that inspire you? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, D. Bradley Baker and Tom Kenny, mm -hmm. because they have such versatility and they've been in like a gajillion projects combined that I'm like, wow, that is something I want to strive for, to be able to do a ton of different voices, be in a ton of different projects, and at times not even be able to be recognized until you saw my name in the credits because you're like, whoa, he, he modulated his voice so much I didn't recognize it immediately. Yeah, absolutely. And um, are you able to tell us about any upcoming projects that you have coming up? Um, I mean, I really can't say too much about it, but I can say that I did a little podcast thingy, uh, a radio show thing that I'm working on with a rather large musician. And that's about the gist I can say of it. But as soon as I can say anything, you're going to be the first person I tell about it. Okay, well, we can't wait. Um, I'm going to, do you mind taking a few questions from the audience right now? Would you be open of to course. that? Okay, great. Guys, just so you know, at the bottom, there is a, a little question box in there. And I see we have some questions in there. So feel free to put them in there. I know we've already, um, I've weaved in some of the questions that people asked in advance already. So um, let's go see what we have. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of silly, but uh, um Hunter's asking if you might be able to do a British accent. I can, in fact, do a British accent. I do British accents for my D and D characters. Um, one of my favorite characters is Edward Dantes. He's a he's a he's a, a wizard, a necromancer, the Dread General of Monte Cristo. I kind of actually took the name from Edmund Dantes, who you know, and and the Count of Monte Cristo. That book uh, that was a very enjoyable read. But yes, I can do a British accent, Hunter. Thank you. That was so fun. Um, <laughs> uh, lots of requests to sing. <laughs> um, do you sing, by the way? I was curious. 
Um, I sing in the shower and in the car. <laughs> I, I, I am, uh, I am learning how to sing. Um, let's see. Um, do you have any impressions that you'd like to do? What are your thoughts on impressions? Do you do a lot, them a lot? I actually don't find myself doing that many impressions. Yeah. Normally you're like asked to, the, in, in like character descriptions, is like a la someone, but yeah. um, not often do they ask for direct impressions these days. So I haven't been practicing them as much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And but uh, um, yeah. Do, so you don't have like a favorite go-to go you do? I mean, I used to just do like a, a, like a weird German Russian accent when I used to just randomly pretend like I was like 10 I was like oh I'll just do Arnold Schwarzenegger that always gets people laugh oh but God. I'm starting to think that people just laughed at me because I was a kid trying to be Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> less because it was a good impression can we hear it <laughs> it was like Gah! just like get to the job I mean I just I would just say like his most obvious lines like I'm the Terminator the governator it wasn't I don't think it was ever a good impression it was just funny watching someone try and do it Oh, yeah, that is funny. That is so... I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's I my nailed. best impressions, definitely. There we go. There we go, guys. Get to the job. <laughs> Do the job. Um, uh, let's see. A lot of these questions are... Um, what's your favorite Star Wars character? Are you a Star Wars fan? Oh, huge Star Wars fan. Um... Obviously, I'm a Luke Skywalker guy, you know, like a, oh, small town hero turned into, like, savior of the galaxy. He was just a regular farm kid, even though he was a Skywalker, so arguably he was always destined to do something because of his, like, family heritage. But, like, you know, he just, like, oh, I was a farmer, and I got found out, and now I'm going to be, like, this savior of the galaxy and make my dad come back to the light side. But I also like the ships of Star Wars, and, like, I like this one guy, uh, Admiral Thrawn from Rebels. He's just super cool. Um, calm, collected, like, Admiral of the Empire, commanding tons of ships, Star Destroyers, or as I call them, Space Doritos. Uh, but, yeah, I just think his, his whole cold, calculated character vibe is really cool. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, we already talked about Diego Milano. Um, would you just curious do you uh know how to dance do you like to dance <laughs> i'm as good at dancing as i am at singing in the shower <laughs> <laughs> like i mean i just move to the beat but i'm not like some sort of practice dancer or anything like that yeah yeah and so what is where do you aspire to be in the next five years you said you're exploring opportunities as a writer perhaps and obviously voice acting are there any other aspirations you have um, primarily it's those, my college education geared towards writing. So maybe hopefully in five years I'll be published or at least have a working draft that I can present to get published. Um, more projects, of course, more lead roles, being in more video games, maybe as the main protagonist, who knows? That would be fun, but that's where I hope to see myself in five years, you know, uh, doing more roles in writing. And, uh, do you graduate from college this year? Yes. Oh, so I am a senior. You're a senior. Yay. And are you guys back on campus? We are back on campus. It has been a, it's been weird coming back, but I love it because LMU Loyola Marymount University for anyone not from LA is a beautiful campus. I like to just sit on the bluff and like look out at the city and like take it all in the, the nice breeze. It's always super calming there. That's amazing. Well, best of luck to you. Um, I was wondering, do you ever find, I, I know a lot of actors and voice actors uh, on occasion struggle with imposter syndrome or feeling like whatever they're doing is not good enough. Has anything like that ever come up in your work? Not necessarily. I mean, you know, as an actor, you're going to audition for way more projects than you book. So you will be told no quite a few times. There might have been like, one point where I was like, oh boy, is this, is this for me? Is this something I want to do? You know, I've always had my family though, right there beside me. This was never a thing I had to fight with them to become, to do. My mom was actually a dancer for a couple, uh, a couple programs back in the day. And she, she, she likes, she likes the entertainment business. Like if this is what you want to do, then you're going to do it. And I'm like, thank you guys. And their emotional support helped me get over whatever doubts I had in my mind. And 
This, this is the industry I love. This is the industry I want to be a part of. And I have never questioned it since. Oh, that's amazing. What kind of dance did your mom do? Uh, salsa. I think it was salsa. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Your parents must be so proud of you. Yes, they tell me that all the time. It really helps me feel good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh well it has been so lovely um getting to know you and chatting with you and learning a bit more about your career and um all your multi-talents that you have and um yeah we wish you the best on everything um if, if you have any more information on the podcast or any other projects please send them my way i would love to share them and help help you spread the word thank you so much for having me uh, i was very grateful Oh, it was a pleasure. Okay, Sean Ryan, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in live. Hopefully, we'll see you next week for Jennifer Hale. Okay. Bye, y'all. Bye.